All right. Uh, welcome to week 13. Yes, week 13. Um, today is a quick, not quite review because you guys have already experienced what I do. So I'm just going to go over the exam uh, number of questions, that kind of thing, um, and the rules of engagement. And then I'm going to do a demo on triggers, uh, specifically how they're actually used in the real world. Um, so in regards to the exam, Tuesday, April 16th at 1830. For those of you that don't know how to read that kind of time, it's at 6.30 at night. You can find this information in Access. If you log into Access, it's at the bottom of your timetable, which is where I copy-pasted it from. It's in B370. Um, so that's the third floor of B building. As soon You know that weird set of stairs that goes up the middle of B in the open atrium area? As soon as you get to the top, it's right there, if you haven't been in B370 yet. 40 questions. Multiple choice, true, false. Um, any given question, there's only one correct answer. So you don't need to try to guess. Um, it's Scantron. You guys have been around the block long enough now. You know how what happens with Scantron. You bring your pencil. You bring your eraser. You don't fill it out in pen. Um, you have an hour or 15 minutes to do 40 questions, which... You know, if you do the math, that's almost uh, two minutes a question. Um, the good news about this one, since most of the topics are much less um, subjective, because that's the problem with database design. A lot of the questions are kind of just subjective, right? As in, what do you feel how to interpret it? Questions about um, what's the command to create a user? I, that's not very subjective. So that's the good news. Now. What's on the exam? It's broken down as follows. Six questions about backups. Uh, this will be covering stuff such as long lines of um, the difference between an incremental and a uh, full backup, backup windows, uh, best practices, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe what is the MySQL command to do a backup? Um, users and security, 10 questions. This is talking about stuff like access security, uh, the concepts of minimum um, minimal privileges, that kind of stuff. Um, transactions, 12 questions on transactions. Things that include, you know, uh, what does ACID stand for? What's the, the command that begins a transaction or that commits a transaction? And if you're just listening, I already gave you two answers. If you're paying attention to what I just said. Um, 12 questions on triggers and functions. Most of them are along lines of how do you reset the delimiter? Or I give you a chunk of code and you tell me if it's going to work. No, I'm not going to give you like five pages of code. Like the functions are like that long. You know, is, oh, this is the definition for a trigger. Is it going to do what it's supposed to do? That kind of question. They're very straightforward, yes, no type questions. Um, honestly, as long as you did the labs, the last two sets of questions are going to be fine. Um, it's all based in the slides. Uh, users and security based on the slides. Backups, again, based on the slides. Um, there's nothing in there that you haven't seen. And like I said, there's nothing subjective about it. Uh, it's not your opinion on whether or not, you know, uh, you're picking the right data type for a field or, you know, that kind of thing. Any questions about what you guys are getting into your, for your final exam? Yeah. Absolutely not. I hate that. I can't remember what I taught before the break. So why the heck would I expect you guys to remember what you learned before the break? Um, no, I'm a big proponent of what they call continuous evaluation. Uh, it's a grading, it's a, an evaluation style that says, if you've tested someone on something twice, you don't do it again. You guys did a lab, 
you guys did a midterm. Topic has been done. It's over with. After the break, you've got a lab per topic, and you're going to have a final exam. You're going to be tested on the. On, you'll be tested on, tested on each topic twice. So, basically, from the break onwards, it's all that's on the test. You don't need to try to remember what happened. You know, in January. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Are you sure? Okay. Three times. All right. Now I'm going to dive into um, the demo. And what I'm going to be doing is something called an inventory allocation system. Now, how many of you have bought something online recently, say in the last year? Let's be honest, probably almost every single one of us has bought something online. Whether it's from Amazon or a pet store or whatever, we've all bought something, AliExpress, you know, or any of those websites where you can buy stuff. Um, pretty much everybody has bought something online, whether it's a textbook or renewing your online, your um, antivirus, that counts as, you know, buying something online. Now. Inventory allocation is an interesting thing. When you buy stuff online, it doesn't magically disappear out of the warehouse the second you place the order, right? It's like you buy something from Amazon. It does, there isn't some little pixie that picks, like you hit buy, 10 seconds later, somebody grabs it off the shelf, puts it in the box. It's not quite that fast. Amazon's getting pretty fast, but it's not that fast. Most places, what they do is they maintain inventory. So they keep stock of everything they sell on shelves, whatever. Um, and what happens is when somebody buys something, it creates an inventory allocation for them. So it's saying, oh, I bought three t-shirts today. So what it's going to do is it's going to say three t-shirts have been reserved. So the next time somebody goes to buy something, it's going to go, oh, we had 20 of these shirts available we've sold three so we have 17 left there still could be 20 sitting in the warehouse because it hasn't been shipped yet but as far as the world is concerned there's only 17 available because three have been allocated to someone so at that point uh, there's a process involved that keeps track of how many allocations have been dealt with and when a product gets shipped it releases the allocations and decrements the actual on-hand inventory. So when, for example, you buy a t-shirt from Tea turtle and they finally put it in the envelope and they put your sticker on it and they scan it for UPS, at that point, it decrements it out of inventory because now it's been quote unquote chipped. It doesn't mean it's been picked up by UPS or FedEx or whatever, but it's now in the hands of the courier to deal with for the most part. So I'm going to go through an example, and I'm actually going to post the files for this example for you guys to go through. As an example, after the fact, there's no point trying to keep up with me while I'm doing the demo. Because I'm not going to type in every trigger myself. I already have them created. I'm going to screen, explain to you what they're doing, demonstrate what they're doing. Um, years ago, I did this demo live, and it took almost two, the whole two hours. Because I had a typo, and it took me half an hour to find a bug. In the meantime... Students at this point are like, because they're so bored, because I'm dancing, they're cursing at the laptop because you can't figure out the stupid bug. I was missing a semicolon, by the way. <laughs> We've never experienced that feeling before. Um, all right. So um, when, I up, when I post the announcement tonight, I'll upload the matching files for it. So there's a database with an existing structure and three triggers. Now, to show you guys what's in the database, it's basically an ordering system without the customer. So the customer has nothing to do with this. So I decided, you know what, we're not gonna include the extra craft. Um, we have a list of products. And let's make this nice and big. All right, bunch of drugs. Um, List came from an online list of drugs. It's an easy way to populate data if you don't need to want to think about it. And you can see that we have a product and a quantity. The quantity is what's available in the warehouse. 
So in the, the online pharmacy, they have stacks of boxes full of prescriptions and they can fill them out as needed. We have orders, which is, you know, the world's most complicated table because there's no extra data in there. Just when was the order created and when was it shipped? Um, there's order lines, which is basically what product, how many did we buy, what order is it tied to? And then we have allocations, which should be an empty table at this point. Yes. And this is this table shows which product is associated to what order line and how many have been requested. Okay. So this is our starting point. If when an order is being placed, it should be the first thing that is done. Orders received. Person says they want 10 boxes of insert pills here. Which pills do we have here? Hey, they want five boxes of vitamin D, prescription vitamin D. We're just going to skip the one that was above that for now. And four boxes of vitamin D. So what's the first thing that should happen? No, you should see if there's enough available. So that's step number one. You have to check inventory and see if there's enough inventory left. So how do you check the inventory? You write a trigger to do it. So I'm going to grab this trigger and I'm going to slip it in the editor here so you can see what it looks like. Hang on. I'm going to make this nice and small. Okay. Line number one, we're going to change the delimiter. That's something we covered pretty clearly last time. We're going to create a trigger. The name of conventions on this is not important. You just call it whatever you want. Um, I tend to prefix my triggers with TRG, so I know it's a trigger as opposed to a function. Um, I'm going to do it before insert on order lines. So before I put in the order line, I need to check if there's inventory. So then for each row being inserted, that means if I'm trying to put in three different products, it'll check all three products individually. And then begin. So then I declare three variables. I declare how many do we have on hand. I declare how many have been allocated, which then I declare one called available. Now it's a really simple piece of math, which you'll see in a minute. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I don't need a cursor for this because I'm only ever doing one task. So I'm going to go select quantity into on hand from products where the product ID matches whatever is being inserted. So essentially what it's doing is it's going to select the quantity that's available or in the warehouse from the products into the variable called on hand. So now we're setting the value of on hand. Then we will add up the all the quantities in allocations based on that product and into a variable called allocated. So we're just going to tell the, the database, hey, add up everything that's been allocated for this product. Bam. Now you'll notice if allocated is null, then set allocated to zero. And if. Now, some people look at that and go, well, that's an interesting thing to do. Here's something I discovered, um, which is a MySQL special. Uh, remember I said it took me almost two hours to do it the first time? This was one of the bugs I fought with. Um, apparently, uh, MySQL, if you try to do any math with a null, it allows it to happen. But it makes everything null. So 1 plus null equals null. Instead of 1 plus null equals error, it goes 1 plus null equals null. 100 times null equals null. 1 minus null equals null. You can see a pattern here, right? So what's happening is it detects if allocated is null because, again, aggregate functions, if it doesn't find anything, returns a null. It doesn't return a zero. And we set allocated to zero. All right. So then we're going to do another little piece of math. Set available equal to on hand minus allocated. So 
whatever we have in the warehouse minus whatever has been set aside for a customer is what we actually have available. Then we go, if the availability is less than whatever we're asking for, we're going to actually go raise an error message saying insufficient inventory. End of trigger. So I'm going to grab this, run it. Doesn't give me an error message. Fantastic. So now insert into, oops, insert into orders. Uh, the hex, the whatever it is, column, order date, order date, values, now, and go. So I got to make sure I've got an order that hasn't been shipped yet. There we go. There's my order. So we're going to be playing with order number two. And I'm going to add an order line now. I'm going to go insert into order lines, order ID, product ID, and uh, quantity. So we're going to go um, We just want to pull up products really quick. Uh, number four, uh, order ID two, product ID four, and I want three boxes. And I'm going to run that. Okay. No error messages. Cool. Let's go check our allocations. There should still be nothing there because we're not doing anything yet. If we look at our order lines, um, we can see right here where this is the one we just added. Cool. So we don't have any allocations yet. So our system is kind of broken. Because now what happens is I can start putting in order after order because I'm not putting anything aside. So as far as it's concerned, as long as I've got um, in my order, as long as I've got less than nine, everything is cool because I'm not setting any aside. So I'm going to try to insert um, 14 boxes. And we get an error message right at the bottom here. I, I know it's really, really small and you guys can't see it, um, but take my word for it. It says infant, in, insufficient inventory. Um, I really wish I could make MySQL make that big, but I can't. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go really old school. Uh. Okay. Now I can make this big for everybody's enjoyment so you can see the error messages. I'll keep the um the code editing here but paste anyway. There's the error message I put there. Insufficient insufficient inventory. This is kind of working. What it's doing right now is it's saying, hey, you cannot order more than we actually have in the warehouse. But it doesn't care that we have not allocated any. So in theory, if there's nine, six people could order all nine boxes and it would allow it. Not cool. So now we need to decrement how much is available to the customer to buy by creating an allocation. So we're going to say, hey, Somebody just gave us their credit card. We took their money. So may, just maybe we should put the stuff aside for them until we manage to ship it. And like I said before, it's impossible for the stuff to come off the shelf the instant somebody buys something. It needs to be put just aside virtually. It's been reserved. Okay. So, which brings me to the next trigger. This one's a little... Uh, more complicated. Um, or ship. No, actually, this one's a lot simpler. I lied. 
It's the next one that's complicated. Okay, this one fits on one screen. So again, we reset our delimiter because that's just how it works. Create a trigger. I'm calling it trigger allocate inventory. After insert on order lines, for each row, begin. So it's saying for every row of data we're going to put in, we're going to put some stuff aside. And we're going to insert into allocations the order line ID, because we need to know where it's been allocated, how much was put aside, and which product it was that was allocated. And then we're going to insert the new values. So new ID, new quantity, new product. And then we're going to end it. So let's go and run this again. And that worked. And I am going to go back to my products so I can try to find something else to play with that doesn't have huge numbers tied to it. Let's go with uh, number 45. All right. So same order. I'm changing, putting two aside when it's product number 45. And of course, that is not going to work. That's fine. Query okay. One went in. So now we can go back to work and we can look at our order lines. 35, two aside. However, if we go look at allocations, now we have one, we have two boxes that have been put aside. So I can run that command over a few more times. And now suddenly, even though it let me two times, now we're out of inventory. Why? Because if we look at the product, we can see that that product had five on the shelf. So there's five on the shelf. And now if we look at our allocations, we have four allocated and we just tried to buy one more. I mean, two more. So five minus four is one. Can we buy two? No, because we don't have the inventory available to it. Now, a fancier system would create a back order. So it would sell it to you, but then put a back order on it. But that's way above this class. I'd probably take me like an hour to figure it out, all the bits and pieces to do it. So right now we've put aside four and we have asked for two more, now we're getting the insufficient inventory. The last step is the actual, um, we shipped our product one. Okay, and like I said earlier, this one is a lot more complicated than the, the other two. What's cool about this example, and I'm gonna slap it in here and go through it completely, um, and we are missing the delimiter. All right, much gooder. Okay. This one's a lot more complicated, but what's cool about this trigger is it shows you one of everything I talked about last week about triggers. All right. So again, we set our delimiter. That's nothing new. We create our trigger order shipped after update on orders. So we're going to check the orders. And only after it's been updated will we run this for each row. In other words, for every order that is shipped, we're gonna run this. Now what's cool is sometimes, let's just say, um, okay, for example, Amazon's a great example of this, where you know you buy something and then an hour later you go, oh, crap, I, then you forgot something and you buy something else. And then the next day you go, oh, crap, I forgot something. So you buy a third thing and some magically it all shows up in one shipment because Amazon magic. Um, it's not magic. It's just really good logistics. But it feels like magic sometimes. So sometimes it, they'll process all three of your orders in a single go and just 
put them all in the same box. Um, so this is just taking care of that. So we're gonna have a bunch of variables. So we have um, product ID and order line ID. Uh, we have an exit loop, uh, Boolean, allocated, available, new available. Okay, so these are just a bunch of variables that we're gonna use through the code. We are gonna declare a cursor for selecting the products in the order we're shipping. So essentially, you know, we need to know what products are being released out of the allocation. Therefore, we need to know what's being shipped. That's what this is doing. It's a straightforward SQL query. And as always, because MySQL is special that way, we have to declare a continue handler for our not found. So when we run out of products in an order, we need to exit gracefully. And that's what's gonna happen is, oh, we went through every product in this. Um, this would actually be really interesting because um, in that order, I have a product that I don't have an allocation for, and I've never actually done this example like this before. Fun. Uh, then I open up the cursor, so essentially I, I run the query. And then you'll notice something a little different in here. This here, um, you can actually place tags in your triggers so that you can actually do something called a go-to. A lot of people have been told that go-tos are bad. Uh, it's an old programming style where um, you set a label in your code and you could just jump to that spot whenever you want in your code. Um, I think it took uh, something like 20 years for C++ was allowed to be, have go-tos. Uh, Java just got go-tos. Uh, PHP got go-tos, I think, about five years ago because... Everybody said go-tos are bad, and then they always got stuck in that one case that where they needed to do something like a go-to and they couldn't. So they everybody got go-tos. Um, and this, it just allows you to actually name your loops, for example, so you can actually name your loop and jump to that spot. Okay, so we're gonna fetch uh, from the allocation cursor from the order line and the product ID. Um, if exit loop is set to true, in other words, it's magically hit, that item, uh, there's no more. It actually closes the cursor and actually quits the loop. So you can actually, um, in MySQL, you can do something called leave. In Python, you might know it as break. Uh, in all C-like languages, it's break. JavaScript has it too. So you know you got a loop and you can just break out of the loop. Or uh, if you're using a case statement, you can break out of the case statement. Uh, it allows you to just quit at that point. So you can leave the named loop. All right, so then I'm going to read the quantity from allocated, from allocations, wherever it is that I'm trying, the order line I'm pulling right now. And if allocated is null, it sets allocated to zero. And I guess looking at this example, I must have done the example where I had an order line that didn't have an allocation because... That was a handler for that exact case. Um, and then I set the quantity uh, into available. Basically, I'm pulling whatever's on the shelf. And then we do the fantastic new available. Basically, if we're setting it to whatever's available minus whatever's been put aside. And then we go, hey, if the new available is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna make it to zero because it's impossible to have negative inventory. Yeah, five things on a shelf and you th you ship them all out, you get, it's impossible to have negative five on a shelf. But negative numbers are not real as far as inventory is concerned. Um, and then we update the product and we delete from the allocation so that there's nothing left in the allocation. Now, in a proper modern system, you wouldn't delete the allocations, you'd leave them there, but mark them as fulfilled. So you'd add extra layers saying, hey, by the way, this allocation was filled on date. So if anybody decides to argue, they can actually go through and look at the dates of when everything happened. We end the loop and we quit. So now I'm gonna go grab this and hit run. All right, so now I'm gonna go update orders set shipped order shipped 
equal to now, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, two rows affected. And that was really stupid because I just ran, <laughs> I ran on all the orders. I shipped all my orders again. Uh, it really doesn't make a difference. All right, so now if I go look at my allocations, oh, that's not good. Okay. That. I did not get an error message. Oh, that's always fun. Now I'm sitting down. <laughs> All right, folks, let me get a second here. I think I know what I'm doing wrong. Let's try this again. Insert into orders, uh, order date values now. I'm going to start over and see if I can make this work. Let's go pick a new product here. Uh, oh, that's good. 47 will work. Wow. Three. Great. Forty-seven. Okay. So, go to allocations. It's there. Look at order lines. It's there. Go to orders. That's not updated. So now I'm going to go. Or equal to three. Rose matched one. One change. That worked. Fantastic. My trigger's failing, and it's failing silently. How much fun is that? Um, okay, so SQL uh, raise log raise notice. Just got to remember what the syntax is. Raise notice. Not trigger DRG shipped. You guys get to experience the joy of um, Typo, comment, output. All right, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to hard do it then, okay?
debugging where I'm going to walk through the code and put output, like print an error message above each spot until I find where it doesn't work. So we got a loop. So now I am going to take this and go, okay. Um, inside loop, run. Nope. So it's not finding the records. That's what's happening. And that's really interesting. Let's go take a look at my allocations. Order line ID 7. Order line ID 7. So if I go look at my trigger, this should go. Order line ID 7. Order ID. Okay, found it. Dan's being stupid. There's nothing wrong with my code. I'm an idiot. Okay, so let's take out my uh, my debug message here, and we'll go hit. Actually, where's the exit? Okay. Save. You know, it helps when you add things to the order line where I'm inserting into order three. What's that order number I've got next to my cursor? 32. It's basically not finding anything to get rid of. So let's go kind of fix that like this. Now, let's try, uh, let's take a look at our allocations again. Okay, so we go, uh, okay, product ID, that, 47 is good. Uh, if I look at my order lines, uh, okay, that might actually work now. Um, so we're gonna go, um, so now we're gonna ship it. And let's see if my code actually worked. Go to allocations. Now we have one less allocation. And if I go look at my products, before it's 14, now it's 12. So the, the allocation system is doing what it's supposed to be doing now. It's working. Uh, what did we just learn by watching Dan sit there and struggle for 10 minutes? Make sure you type your crap in right. Uh, even if your code is perfect, it will not survive a contact with the meat sack, also known as me. Okay, so we have three tr fancy triggers that are doing three different jobs. One's checking to see if we have inventory available for sale. One, we set stuff aside. And the third one, once we ship it, we literally say, hey, we have more of these on the shelf. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the database and collect these triggers for you guys. And I'll include them as part of the announcement tonight. So you have these examples. You can use them as a study tool because it literally shows you everything about the triggers. Um, but yeah, it worked. <laughs> well, it was very um, uh, was it, uh, anticlimactic when it's when you realize it's actually me being dumb um, and not my code. Because I've done this example for years and I was wondering why that code suddenly stopped working. I was about to blame MySQL for changing things. Um, all right, so 
that is that. Um, that is officially the end of the semester. I will be here next week if anybody has questions for the exam. So I'll be coming to class, but I'll just be sitting at a desk. If anybody's got questions, you know, you're not sure about some of the topics or whatever, I'll be here. Um, if I remember right, all the labs are due. Let's go double check that before I open my mouth. So lab nine is due Friday. Lab 10 is due next Friday. Like I said before, I just recommend you sit down and do them both back to back. But, you know, that's what you have left to do is two labs. And I've had a fair amount of those submitted already. So people are, uh, they're deciding to clean off their plate a little bit so they can concentrate on all the other courses, their SBAs and stuff. All right. That's it, folks. It's been fun. Um, I will see you guys in lab next week or at the exam, as the case may be. Um, yeah, that's, about, that's it, folks. End of the semester.